Namaste friends, Hare Krishna. My name is Amit Garg. Welcome to my channel, VedicAstroAmit.com. Today we'll talk about a very powerful two-hour window. Uh, first of all, thank you to all the paid members of YouTube. And also a big thank you to all the subscribers and people who comment and share uh, and who follow the channel. Uh, a very auspicious uh, uh, Sharad Purnima to everyone, Ashwini Purnima, and it's also known as Kojagari Purnima. So that's going on right now. That's the full moon currently. And I, I created a separate video, a uh, short video on that, uh, the importance and significance. So that's going on. That just started uh, a couple hours ago. So this is the most powerful Purnima, the most powerful full moon of the year. Uh, it signifies the change of season. Uh, Sharad Ritu, so usually in the autumn uh, month uh, of October, usually. Uh, so this is uh, the Purnima that is big for healing. And uh, the Purnima is when sun and moon are opposite each other. So the moon is full of nectar. Moon is full of light and this healing energy uh, and, and Amrita. And so every full moon, is, is that's the case. But this one is the most powerful, the most auspicious, and most uh, sp is the most special. Uh, on this Purnima, uh, it's, uh, they say Lord Sri Krishna is showering his blessings in the form of each of his 16 emotions, Shodash Kala. Uh, and that's also connected. In Jyotish, we have 16 Vargas, 16 divisional charts. They represent each of these emotions. We also have... Uh, 16 different tithis, uh, which are the lunar days. So the, each tithi has a specific emotion. So that's the connection. So this Purnima, Sharad Purnima, uh, has the blessings and the energy of all the 16 tithis, you can say, 16 emotions of Lord Sri Krishna and very powerful. Now, that's Sharad Purnima. But this particular Sharad Purnima, this year's Sharad Purnima is even more powerful for several reasons. Now, uh, try to understand the exact moment of Purnima is when sun and moon are exactly 180 degrees apart from each other. That's the peak. That's the climax. Uh, the actual Tithi, the lunar day, starts about 20 to 27 hours before that. So we, that actually started a couple hours ago. And the peak of this Purnima will be around 4.25 a.m. Pacific time on October 17th. And that'll be around 4.55 p.m. IST Indian time, October 17th. So now that is the window. So around that window, around that peak moment, two hours of window. So you can see the timing here on the screen uh, on your top left. So it's on October 17th, 3 a.m. to 5 a.m. Pacific time in the U.S. And that'll be 3.30 to 5.30 p.m. IST in India. That's the window that is so crucial, so powerful for several reasons. One, uh, the moon will be Gandanta. Uh, it will be transitioning from Pisces to Aries. Gandanta, there are three Gandanta points in the zodiac, the edge of fire sign and the water sign. So that is the, the edge of uh, Cancer and Leo, the edge of Scorpio and Sagittarius, and the edge of Pisces and Aries. Uh, so the Pisces and Aries, this is the Gandanta that the moon is transitioning through. Gandanta literally means a karmic knot. So that means whenever an important planet transits through this uh, small zone in the zodiac, uh, huge karmic repercussions, huge karmic debts can be cleared, uh, or we, can, we, we get a lot of karma from past lives. It's like a sudden uh, downpour of karma. So we can, uh, we can uh, just let go. You know, we can get rid of a lot of karma during this Gandanta phase. It can uh, lead to change, transformation, uh, but also... A powerfully spiritually charged window. So moon is going through Gandanta exactly at the moment of full moon. That's what makes it so powerful, so auspicious, so spiritual, is that the moon will be Gandanta and it's approaching the degree of the sun. So exact Purnima will be uh, during this phase of Gandanta. And in this Gandanta, moon is transitioning from Revati Nakshatra to Ashwini Nakshatra. Uh, the, both of these nakshatras are deeply connected with healing, especially Ashwani. Ashwani nakshatra is ruled by the Ashwani Kumars, the celestial physicians. They are the twins who go around the, the, in the heavens and they're treating, they're rejuvenating the gods. So this is a really powerful uh, transition uh, of the moon and happening 
uh, around the full moon of Sharad uh, Purnima. So that's the most auspicious Purnima. Uh, so it's a really a spiritually charged uh, a couple hours. Uh, of course, it, it extends beyond that also, you know, before and after you can do uh, ex extend that. But but that is the climax. That is the peak of this energy. So what things we can do, what we can, uh, how we can enhance that. Uh, first of all, in on Kojagari, uh, this Purnima is also known as Kojagari Purnima, which means uh, Kojagari, meaning who is awake. So literally, uh, this is the Purnima, the full moon, uh, when we stay awake and worship uh, and welcome Mahalakshmi. So one of the good recommendations is stay awake. Now, this is going to be early morning for uh, US in US specific time anyway. Uh, but for India also, for India, uh, you know, people can stay awake the night of 16th, which is uh, starting now, actually happening now. And so, uh, but uh, uh, staying awake, uh, we can chant uh, Lakshmi mantras, we can chant uh, Vishnu mantras, we can chant the... Uh, Vishnu Gayatri Mantra, uh, and we can uh, chant any Devi, any Shakti Mantras. Those will be very powerful. We can do fasting, at least during that window. Uh, we can do meditation, uh, and we can give donations. Donations are extremely powerful. You can also do Yagya, fire ceremony. And for this Purnima, I also recommended you can, uh, the, there is a custom uh, to prepare Kheer, which is the rice pudding, and then put it out in the moonlight and then eat it the next morning. So those rituals you can do, uh, and the, this, uh, anything you put, put out in the moon, uh, kheer, or you can also put water, uh, drinking water, keep it outside in a glass container, uh, cover it, uh, and then um, put it in the moonlight and drink it the next morning. Uh, go outside uh, in the moonlight, uh, and uh, you can absorb those that the, the energy, that amrita, that nectar. Uh, and then also you can chant uh, moon mantras uh, for Chandra. Om Shram Shreem Shram Sah Chandra Namaha. That is the beach mantra for Chandra for moon. Uh, and then also you can uh, do the uh, Lakshmi puja or any kind of puja. Uh, and people also donate uh, fruit, especially bananas uh, during uh, Sharad Purnima. So you can give donation of uh, fruits and food, uh, any other donation, money, um, and then uh, uh, be mindful and uh, release a lot of karma. That should be the intention that, you know, just stay calm and uh, let things bubble up and just let go. So do not miss this really powerful window. It doesn't come very often. You know, we don't see a full moon. That's the most powerful full moon. And then moon is Gandanta. And at the exact peak of the moon, full moon, uh, and then it's transitioning through Revati and uh, Ashwini nakshatras. Uh, if you haven't already, if you like, and if you like the content, uh, please like, share, and subscribe. And we're also starting a new course, advanced course, uh, starting November 7th. Uh, that's on Zoom live, uh, one class per week, one and a half hours. If you're interested, if you have basic understanding of Jyotish, you can join that course on my website, vedicastroamid.com. Also, there are beginners courses. Uh, one is going on that's live on Zoom. You can also do uh, the pre-recorded version where you can listen to all the lessons at any time. Uh, and if you want a private consultation, you can also book that on my website, vedicastroamit.com. Again, thank you for your time. Really appreciate all your support and uh, you know all your comments and feedback. Uh, and may we all have a very blissful and auspicious Sharad Purnima uh, Kojagari Purnima and Ashwini Purnima. Namaste. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya.